exactly what I just showed you, f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 5 at 3.25. All right, so um, I already gave you the tangent line, but let's go ahead and build it from scratch just as a little refresher. Okay, so first of all, we've got to take the derivative. So that's 2x minus 3. Okay, um, take the derivative. Now, we are going to, we're not going to plug in 3.25 right here, okay? We are going to plug in 3 because we're picking the closest whole number to the value we want to approximate this to. So we're going to find the slope of the tangent line at 3. So 2 times 3 is 6, 6 minus 3 is 3. That's the slope of the tangent line. Well, what else do we need to write the equation of the tangent line? We've got the slope. We need the y value. Okay, so I need to go in and plug 3 into my original function as well. 3 squared minus 3 times 3 minus 5. So that's 9 minus 9. Well, that's nifty. It is negative 5. So our tangent line is y plus 5 is equal to 3 times x minus 3. And in this case, you do want to go ahead and put it in slope-intercept form because we just want to be able to plug in values. Um, into the function and get the y value. We don't want to have to plug in the x and then all that stuff. Yes, so that is our tangent line. We are going to use the tangent line to the curve at x equals 3. And let me write this beside it. You might want to write it beside it so when you're looking back you know what the heck it is. Tangent line at x equals 3. So we are going to use that line right there to approximate the value of 3.25. I would rather deal with this, well, hmm. yeah, let's go ahead and put it in as a decimal because that's not too bad. 3 times 3.25, well 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 0.25 is 0.75, so that's 9.75. 9.75 minus 14, 14 is what? Negative uh, 4.25? Negative 4.25. Now, I'm going to use my calculator to plug this into the original function just to see how close our approximation is, okay? I'm going to plug 3.25 into the original function. It's pretty close. The actual value of 3.25 in f of x is negative 4.1875. Our approximation is negative 4.25, so it's pretty close of an approximation. Yes? It's going to be the approximation. They're not asking for the actual value. They're asking for an approximation of the actual value. Now, let me point out something. If we wanted to approximate the value for x equals negative point or negative 1.8, okay, if we wanted to approximate um, x equals negative 1.8. Can I plug negative 1.8 into my 3x minus 14? No, why not? So if you did it at x equals 3. Right, I did it at x equals 3. Negative 1.8 is nowhere near x equals 3. Okay, um, so you got to pick, and usually they will tell you, okay, usually they will tell you what value 
uh, to plug into your tangent line. Otherwise, just pick the closest whole number. Okay, pick the closest whole number. Huh? Yeah, so for this one, I would go back and do the whole process and find the tangent line at negative 2, and then I'd plug negative 1.8 into that tangent line. Okay, uh, let's look at something, some weird function like this. Okay, now that one still, it would not have been that terrible to plug uh, 3.25 into that quadratic function. Now, um, the square root of x cubed plus 1, I definitely don't want to have to cube 1.9, add 1, and then figure out what its square root is. Guess what? We can't figure out square roots without calculators unless they're perfect squares. So there's no way to, to find the exact value of this without a calculator. But we can use our tangent line approximation to find a close uh, approximation for this function. Okay, So, same deal. We want to write the equation of the tangent line and what what, uh, what value we're going to use? Two. two. Okay, we're going to find the tangent line at x equals two. So, anytime we want to find the tangent line, we got to start by taking the derivative, plugging in the value. So, the derivative of this, what does this require? The chain rule. Yes, we need to write that as x cubed plus 1 to the 1 half. And then we need to apply our chain rule. Bring down the exponent. Keep the inside the same. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So, uh, let's kind of fix this up a little bit before we plug in 2. Uh, the 3 and the 1 half, I'm going to express as 3 halves, and I'm going to move the x squared here. Actually, let me put the x squared in the numerator, because guess what? That negative 1 half is going to go to the denominator. Okay, that is the cleaned up version of our function questions about that? Are we okay with that? Now let's plug in 2. Three times two squared over two times two cubed plus one, the square root of two cubed plus one. Two squared is four. Three times four is twelve. 2 cubed is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So 12 over 2 is 6. Square root of 9 is 3. 6 over 3 is 2. The slope of our tangent line is 2. Are we okay with that? Alright. <clears throat> we need to write our equation. But we need our y value, so we've got to plug 2 into the original function as well. So it's the square root of 2 cubed plus 9. Well, guess what? 2 cubed plus 9. 2 cubed plus 1, which is 9. Sometimes my brain just works faster than my mouth. I guess that's a good problem to have sometimes. So the y value is 3. So our... Tangent line is y minus 3 is equal to the slope is 2, our x value is 2. Be careful, I know it's a bit deceiving when our x value and our slope is the same thing. Just be careful. Um, they will have answer choices that honestly you would get if you made a sign error somewhere. Well, your approximation is not going to be rounded. Your approximation is only going to have like one, maybe two decimal places. Your approximation is going to be exact. Now, um, I know on the last problem I said it's easier to go ahead and solve this for slope-intercept form. 
Um, but it's kind of actually easier if you if you do go ahead and plug in x right here, because in this case now what I have to do is x minus two, which is in this case x is one point eight. So that's going to give us one point eight minus two, which is huh? What? Oh, 1.9. I thought y'all said 4.9, and I was like, what? Are you trying to give me the answer? <laughs> okay, I got you. 1.9, I don't know why the 8 on the brain. I think the 2 cubed was stuck. Um, so anyways, that's obviously negative 0.1. 2 times negative 0.1. Well, 2 times negative 0.1 is negative 0.2. And add 3 to that, so 2.8. Negative 0.2 plus 3 is 2.8. Um, again, let me give you the exact value so we can see how good of an approximation this is. The square root of 1.9 cubed plus 1. Um, pretty darn close on this one. 2.803. Our approximation is very close to the exact value. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hugh just asked a very good question. Um, if the approximation was 1.25, would we got the final answer? No, they are not going to have 1.2 and 1.3 as answer choices. They would have a 1.25 and they would have as the answer choice. Um, so notice. The closer your x value is to the x value that you're using to write the tangent line, the closer your approximation is going to be. Okay, 1.9 is closer to 2 than 3.25 is to 3. Okay, the further you get away from that point that you're using to approximate, the less accurate your approximation is going to be. And that's going to be for any curve. Okay? All right. Pretty simple, right? Okay. It, it's kind of a lengthy process, but we've done all these pieces before. It's just a specific application. Okay, so this is actually a very common way that this is phrased uh, on the exam. You may be asked to approximate the derivative or the slope of the tangent line given a table of values. So what you're going to do, if that is the question, is you're going to use the slope of the secant line. Anytime I see, say secant line, that's the slope between two points. Okay? The secant line is the slope between two points. Tangent line is the slope through one point perpendicular to a curve. Um, secant line is the slope between two points. You're going to pick the two closest ones that you can to the value in question to approximate the slope of your tangent line. Okay, we, can, we did this at the beginning of calculus, actually, before we really started talking about the exact tangent line. We found the slope between two points, and we made those points get closer together, and the closer they got, they became more like the tangent line. Remember doing that? A little bit? That's kind of what you're doing here. You just have select values, though. So let's approximate the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2, given, I, I got a couple of tables here. Okay, here's the first thing. Well, I mean, that's as close as we're going to be able to get on this one. But we're going to look at, well, what if the table looks like this? Okay. Um, so this is a table of values, x and y values, for some function. Okay, we don't know what the function is, we just know these select values of it. Uh, we don't care what the function is. We, all they want to know is the slope of the tangent, an approximation of the slope of the tangent line at 2. Well, if we want to know at 2, the closest we can get to 2 is we kind of sandwich it here with 1.5 and 2.5. So the slope is uh, y minus y, and it really doesn't matter which order you do it in, just so you keep them uniform. If you do 0 first, then you've got to put 2.5 first. So we get 2 on the top and 1 on the bottom. So 
The slope of the tangent line at x equals 2 is approximately 2.